Hello and welcome back to the Beefy Tech channel. This video will go over how to most effectively undervolt your Ryzen 7000 CPUs and show you exactly how I go about maxing out my own undervolts. This will help you to max yours out too. You're going to require Ryzen Master and OCCT as a fair note and you're going to get these by just googling for them. So for Ryzen Master you just have to type it out. First one that pops up will be the correct link. You'll have to scroll down Click download now, extract the file if it's in a zip folder, and you're done. For OC base, OCCT, you're just gonna Google OCCT, first link up yet again, click download, and you're good to go. Let's quickly go over exactly what my curve optimizer is currently saying. So with Ryzen Master, you're able to see exactly what uh, negative voltage offsets you've applied to your CPU. One important thing to note is that my core 5 is actually lower than all the others. The reasoning behind this is that core 5 is actually my best core. As you can see over here, that little star marks that core 5 is indeed my fastest core on the CCD, with core 1 being my second fastest core on the CCD. Now, the reason that is important is because the fastest core and the second fastest core generally cannot be undervolted as much. Their stability simply isn't as good the more you undervolt, and they do require more voltage to be able to be the best core. So, as I know that sounds quite counterintuitive, you'd expect the fastest core to be able to undervolt more, but it's quite frankly on the contrary. Some people are believing that they cannot do negative 30 or negative 40 undervolts because of the one single fast core that can't do it, and they apply an all core and then it doesn't work. Here's my advice. Use Ryzen Master and use its strengths wisely. So you can see your fastest core, you can see your second fastest core, play around them. Give them more voltage to work with, so a smaller under undervolt, and then apply crazy undervolts to the other cores to be able to diminish the overall temperatures using the other cores and not having to undervolt your main primary strongest cores as much. Right before we go into the BIOS so I show you how it all works, I did want to mention one more thing. Undervolting has a point where it just isn't worth undervolting anymore, like past of. So for me, I found that going from negative 30 to negative 40 on six cores, does basically nothing. The amount of like frequency that you can gain from it just kind of plateaus after negative 30 for my specific chip. Of course, that will be chip dependent and you'll have to test yourself. Do let's say negative 10 or negative 15 on your fastest core and then go hog wild on the rest of your cores. Try negative 30. If that's stable, then try negative 35. And if that's stable, I'm saying this for your six, uh, six or seven cores that are, you know, able to do that try negative 40, and always have that one fastest core like negative 10, negative 15, and push the rest of the cores. But if you see no more performance gains past a certain point, dial it back down. It's pointless to go any further and you're just adding instability and no more performance gains or temperature drop. All right, once you enter BIOS by pressing F2 or the delete key, you're going to want to go to advanced. In advanced, go to AMD overclocking, accept the warning, and then you're going to want to go to Precision Boost Overdrive. Mind you, you're going to have to set your Precision Boost to Advanced and then your PBO limits the motherboard. Also do recommend setting Platform Thermal, thermal Throttle Limit to 89. Then you're going to enter the magic little area called Curve Optimizer and set it to Per Core. This will allow you to address every single voltage of every single core. For the purposes of this video, I'm only toying around with the first CCD which is the 3D cache CCD. So for people with two CCDs, I recommend doing one CCD at a time just to test stability properly. And I recommend starting at negative 30 on seven cores and negative 10 on your best core and do that as your baseline. If you crash, turn things a bit lower. If you're st stable, go a bit higher. I want to quickly give you an example of just how sensible that single best core can be. Now, I'm going to change my core 4, which is the actual core 5, to negative 30. Just to show you an example of what happens when you set to your, your best core to something that is 100% guaranteed unstable. So, it took about a minute and a half to get to this point, but eventually the screen goes fully black and it boots to the password screen where I have just enough time to type in the password before some magic happens and the PC crashes. That shows definite instability and you want to go right back to the BIOS screen and adjust the numbers immediately. Mind you, the only thing I touched was the single best core. 
I then proceeded to input the negative 20 millivolts in my core 5 specifically to be able to get the system to boot and then ran a stress test. And what ended up happening is after 9 minutes of OCCT I stopped the test and everything looked to be fine, sat at idle for roughly 1 minute and at idle without doing absolutely anything, the system restarted. And that brings me to a good point. A lot of the instability you're gonna see with an undervolt will actually be at idle rather than in a load. So the best way to test it is not only run OCCT just to check that initial will it crash, but also just use your computer to watch some YouTube and then you'll figure out the hard way if your system will restart or not, as idle tasks will often make undervolts very unstable. Now, let's assume you got a negative 30 all core of some or something of the sort to work perfectly. You will have to use the game you play most for testing just to see where performance regression begins to happen. So for me, the game is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 and for the sake of this test, I use the in-game benchmark. And right here, I've got the two tests that I ran, one with negative 15, negative 30 on the second best, negative 35 on six cores and on a negative 15 on the best, negative 20 on 7 cores. And while I do want to mention that my results on the GPU 1% lows are for some reason awkwardly low at the moment, and this is after I updated to the latest NVIDIA driver, the CPU results are essentially what I had before I reinstalled Windows a couple days ago, so normal results. But here's the thing, I've got 481 on the average, 380 low 5th%, 330 low 1st%. Percent. Perfectly reasonable. This is with negative 35 on 6 cores. Now, I have this one up here with negative 20 on 7 cores, and what you might notice is that for the average FPS and for the low 5th percent, the FPS is actually slightly better with a smaller undervolt. And this is most likely as a result of it, some of one of the cores even, just needing slightly more voltage to push that frequency slightly higher, giving ever so slightly better results. Which essentially means that for me, going past negative 20 is for the sake of uh, decreasing the heat, not for increasing the performance. And this would apply to you guys too. But for you guys, let's say, the performance regression might happen earlier or later. And it's just chip dependent. Your CPU might be able to do a better undervolt than mine and sustain higher uh, frequency and average FPS as a result, or it could do worse. It just depends on what CPU you got, and it's all luck of the draw. So. For me, going more than negative 20 on every single core isn't about gaining extra performance anymore, it's about saving a couple more degrees of heat, which I'll most likely do despite the fact that negative 20 on 7 cores with negative 15 on 1 core in fact performs slightly better. What I would take away from this is that most likely the second fastest core, which is core 1, needs a bit more voltage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this on a negative 20 and I'll put the others on negative 30 to, you know, help the heat a bit more. Now, for those of you that have dual CCDs, you may have noticed I didn't touch the second CCD. All I have said applies to normal frequency CPUs too. The only difference is that for you guys with normal non-3D cache uh, frequency like CPUs, you will not be seeing as big of a performance gain or in fact any performance gain from undervolting, you will just simply be reducing your temperatures. With that said guys, I hope today's video taught you something about undervolting and helped you achieve your maximum undervolt and your maximum performance, and if not, at least helped you achieve slightly better temperatures. This stuff sort of applies to Ryzen 5000 too, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna title it that it's just for Ryzen 7000, as Ryzen 5000 has its own little kinks and quirks when undervolting, and I don't wanna generalize that much. With that said, if it was indeed helpful in any way, make sure to consider subscribing and liking this video, and I hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Peace.